Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and once again, today we are looking at how fractions and decimals are related to one another. We are in our home links, uh, Unit 3, Lesson 9, representing fractions and decimals. So if you take a look at the first row of problems, it says write a fraction and a decimal below each grid. And the uh, picture represents uh, a fractional amount. Okay, now... Typically, we've been dealing with fractions that look something like this, where we take, uh, say, a circle, and we cut it up into parts, like so. I've cut my circle up into six parts, and if I shade in, uh, let's say, two of those parts, that would give me a fraction of two-sixths. These grids, however, are uh, just a representation of a possible 100 parts because the grid is broken up into 10 rows with 10 uh, boxes in each row. So when I look at this picture for number one, I see three whole columns of squares shaded in. So three groups of 10, 10, 10, and 10, that would give me a total of 30 squares shaded in. So my fraction would be 30 hundredths. Now another way of thinking about that, of course, is 3 tenths, because three whole columns is shaded in. Now, I can represent that as a decimal in one of two ways. I could just take the uh, numerator, like so, and place that behind a decimal point, or 0 0.30, or I could take that numerator from the 3 tenths fraction and represent it as 0 0.3. The 0 right here on the right-hand side of the digit 3, again, is a place value holder. And uh, if we're not talking about any hundredths or zero hundredths, you don't really necessarily need the 0 there. Uh, so either one of those uh, decimal uh, representations works, 0 0.3 or 0 0.30. 3 tenths and 30 hundredths is the same value. If I had 30 pennies, that would be the same value as 3 dimes. Okay, So you're looking at the picture, you're asking yourself, what is the value of the number of shaded boxes? Now, for number 2, we see that we haven't quite shaded in an entire uh, column of squares. So right here, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 boxes total out of a possible 100 boxes. So our fraction is 9 hundredths. Okay. So again, to represent that as a decimal, I would start with a zero because we're dealing with less than one whole. Put the decimal point, and then I would put a, another zero right behind the decimal point as a place value holder, telling the reader of this number that we are dealing with not tenths, but hundredths. Okay, again, if I was dealing with a, a dollar amount, if I put a dollar sign front of that decimal amount, you would uh, probably recognize that we we're talking about nine pennies and not nine dimes. Okay. The second row of problems asks you to shade in the appropriate amount. And again, they would probably be useful if you first thought about the fractional value of those decimals. So 0 0.8 okay, is in tenths, so that would be 8 out of 10 rows, or 8 out of 10 columns, okay? So the color in 8 tenths, I would take 8 entire uh, eight entire rows, for example, and shade them all in. Now, another way of thinking about this value, or this amount, is not 8 tenths, but 80 hundredths because I have 80 boxes out of the total 100 boxes shaded in, okay? It's just that I can also think about it in terms of the rows 
that I've shaded in. And there are a total of 10 rows possible, and I shaded in 8 whole rows. Okay? So take a look at these problems and shade in the appropriate amount to solve for 5 and 6. Okay? Then finally, if you take a look at the problems down at the bottom, we are exploring uh, concepts of multiples. So this is review from uh, Unit 2. The numbers 81, 27, and 45 are all multiples of 1. And what else, what other numbers do they all have in common? Okay, So you would have to think about, well, what can I multiply... Uh, together to get to each of these uh, products. So for example 81, what are some combinations of numbers that I can use to get to 81? Well, I know that 9 times 9 gives me 81. So I know that 81 is a multiple of 9. Now when I think about 27 and 45, I know that both of those numbers uh, are multiples of 9, 2, because 9 times 3 gives me 27, and 9 times 5 gives me 45, okay? So I know that 9 must be one of those uh, multiples as well. Um, but what else do they have in common? Okay, well... 81 and 27 don't end in 5 or 0, so 5 can't be a multiple. Uh, I've already established that 9 is a multiple, but what about 3? Okay, 9 times 3 is 27. Well, is there a way that I can multiply or skip count by 3s to get to 45? Well, I know that 9 is actually 3 times 3. Okay, so if I think about 9 times 5, what I'm really doing here is multiplying 3 times 3 times 5. Now I could take that same uh, multiplication algorithm and just switch around the, uh, the parentheses, or in other words, switch around the order that I'm multiplying the factors. It does not matter in which order I multiply those three factors. I'm going to get the same product because 3 times 5 is 15. If I take 15 and add it to itself 3 times 5, 10, 15. Oh, look at that. I get 45. So another way of thinking about 45 is that it is a multiple of 3, because if I skip counted by 3's 15 times, I would get to 45. Now, if that's true about 9 times 5 giving me 45, if I can break down 9 into 3 times 3, I could also do that. 4, 9 times 9 gives me 81. And if each 9 is just the product of 3 times 3, I could say that 81 is just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or 3 to the 4th power. Now, that's getting into exponential notation, which is something that we will start to explore towards the end of our 4th grade year, but uh, uh, not anytime soon. So. Anyway, uh, that's how you would go about finding the multiples of those three numbers, just looking for uh, common uh, factors that they each hold. If you have any questions about fractions or exponents or just math in general, talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you. Otherwise, we will uh, talk again soon, friends. Thanks.